Welcome back to 380. We're going to be doing a video here which uh, is multi-purpose I hope. Uh, we're going to try and show how Fusion deals with simulation. We're also going to try and agree with Orlov, we hope, that uh, bending is bad first. Let's get a file. So navigate to where you want the file to be. Upload in the data panel. And in the Mac, just drag it. Make sure it shows as a solid. Um, we're going to also explore how to save some time here as well uh, by looking for symmetries in the parts. Sometimes it takes a little longer because of the education license. We may be a little bit out of the... Uh, because we don't pay, we go on the low end of the activity. Just close the data panel. Uh, it looks like we do have some symmetry here. So let's go ahead here and... Uh, we'll do a sketch to look for the symmetry and split them into two. So again, at the top here, very top level, capture design history. Then we can return, always return back to it if we wish. We see we have components, so this is an assembly file. So let's do a sketch on the, the origin of the main assembly file itself. Let's make sure we've got that right. Turn on slice. So if we wish, we can also press Shift N to show the color. Um, I'm going to try and split this uh, equally here. And if everything works, it looks. Uh, I modeled this. So I know that these are actually aligned. So I'm going to find one because uh, it's not completely 45 degrees from the horizontal. I'm going to find one and then do an offset. So first, uh, I'm going to project this back plane here. If I want, I can hide the components and all the rest, but I can also, for example, put a point in the midpoint of that. There we go. And I can also project inside of that uh, inner uh, bearing surface, and I can just connect these guys up. Perfect. Next, I just can put a line, make it parallel, and if I want it to be fully constrained, I can just make them equal. Split by. Um, because they're two separate lines, we could try it, but it's not gonna, it's probably not gonna let us do what we want. No, oh, maybe it does. Updates, maybe. See, okay. And we've got two split bodies. This allows us to just simulate half of each. Nice. Once we've got that, if you want, you could, for example, put in a save here just to say I'm ready. So I could say ready to slide. This is for future you to see what happened. You'll notice you go up to V2. You're going to see that one of them is called ready to slide. Shift to the simulation workspace. Uh, to keep things under control, um, I want to keep the static stress. Uh, we could introduce non-linear static stress when we'd, we'd have the rubber uh, parts uh, working, but 
let's not do that. It takes too long to set up and too long to run. Those are parts. Uh, in Fusion, you can go various ways with the simulation. Uh, you can traverse the ribbon left to right, or you can go down through the browser top to bottom. Uh, one small uh, detail look at, to look at here is simulation model one. You can have multiple simulation models, which is how you interpret the parts. Um, we are going to just go with the default right now, but always keep in mind you can create multiple simulation models, and within each of those you can have multiple studies, uh, all of which are running from the same geometry from the design workspace. This is all very handy. Okay, so let's try this first. I'm going to go across the ribbon and simplify. Uh, let's pick the filter. Thing. Let's can get rid of this whole list first, and then just say bodies. Keep in mind that that's selected. Right click, remove all except those two things. Finish simplify. Let's try a minute. Well, let's just go through this. Sorry, materials. Now, I don't know what's going on here. This happened before. Just say, okay, got some stuff going on here. Let's go back to design. We can do this all the time. And let's pick our materials for these components physical material. Now, there's some strange aluminum going on here. Let's pick our own aluminum. 60. Let's go for aluminum. Sixty-sixty-one. That's it there. Let's make sure it's stuck. It can be a little problematic sometimes. Let's also drag it out there once it's gone. So let's try that again. Looks correct. It's selecting a little strange, but there we go. Uh, if you want. To do an extra check, uh, go to properties. Depends what you select. Aluminum. Aluminum. Perfect. Back to simulation. Now, when we try materials, don't know what's going on there before. Uh, yield strength is fine, otherwise, everything is as defined. We're set to go with that. Constraints. We have a pin. Uh, let's just make sure our selection is everything. That looks good. So we've got two phases, and we want to turn it to pin. Tangential is the only free thing because it rotates. That looks fine. Let's see if our degree of freedom view is worked. Uh, if I press Shift N to hide the color and to turn that off. Partially fixed. What else? How else am I going to lock this in place? Well, another constraint is since we split it in two, usually when you do a split, you want to replace the remaining mo removed piece with a frictionless surface. Now, this is all kosher down here. However, this one here is a problem because we might get a, a buckling sort of movement, which is going to be blocked by this. So it might want to twist here. I'm actually going to take that one off the list. Five frictions. And instead, I'm just going to fix one of the edges. And I'm going to only stop it moving in the ZX direction, just in case it wants to move around and stretch a bit in the Y. Let's 
this will allow it to rotate around without shifting because of the symmetry. Should be fine. Again, this is not a perfect simulation because of the lack of the bumpers. Loads. Let's put one kilonewton on both of those guys. Um, as a small little detail here, if you change the units here, it actually acts as a bounce force to say Newton's converter. Perfect. Uh, make sure you've got force per entity. Normal. Direction is good. The icon sometimes disappears. It seems to have an effect. Keep track of our pre-check. Things I have going on there looks okay. It's missing automatic contacts. Next on the ribbon anyway. Uh, the point 10 is how close they need to be to be judged contact. And we'll see that we have none. As we would expect, two free parts. Let's turn on our mesh. This can sometimes take a little bit extra time. And sometimes it's not turned on. There we go. Uh, error. It is where we expect it to be, I think. It's pointing up here, but it's all to do with this face. Uh, it's how the blend is working, and you sometimes get this from neutral CAD files. This body's okay. This one's errored. There's two options. We can either go back to simplify, or we can go back up to design. I'm going to try deleting it. No, oh, can't select it. Let's make sure we've got all. There we go. No, we're not using the other side, so we don't need to delete that one while we're at it. So let's rebuild it though. How big is that? Can I make a best guess here by measuring the size of the other one? They show snap points, so I should be able to get some in there. 2.8 across the short distance. Maybe the fillet is around three. Let's add a fillet. Uh, tangent, all that stuff is fine. Now, what does this do? It just goes back to the way it was, but we now have a an improved face set up here, and hopefully it's forced Fusion to re-investigate that full B-rep or boundary representation. Let's go back to simulation. Uh, it may not get rid of the mesh more until we remesh. Perfect. Now, you can see here we've got quite a dense mesh here caused by these fillets as opposed to the larger phases. Uh, this might is going to be a lot of extra work for the, the solver. Let's simplify that. Remove features. Pick the body first. It's going to highlight what it's going to take. If you keep moving it around, I'll show you what it's going to do. Now, I do like to get rid of this. It's not going to add a lot of stress because it's under compression in here. But I am interested about this one. Let's try getting rid of those big ones first. And then maybe. Well, it's not bad like that. Actually, let's stick with that. That looks okay. Simplified up top. Keeping the stuff we need to define the face but also avoiding major stress risers. Uh, for example, having a corner down in here. Let's stick with that. Regenerate the mesh, because it's out of date. This works well, gives us a nice simple mesh, but all of a sudden we're a little bit too coarse up tall. Let's, how do we adjust that? Let's manage. 
under mesh that sentence. If we have a curved surface, we often do fill in small rest. Uh, this is quite a blobby type shape. <laughs> it's an official word. And what we want to do here is uh, control the amount of mesh based on the curvature. This makes the mesher do the work. And we don't have to do too much work with uh, local mesh control. Let's bump the maximum turn allowed down to about halfway. Say OK. Remesh. Interesting. It gives us a nice dense mesh in here, and that might be okay because we're probably at quite a bit of stress in there. But it's good through here, at least for first pass. But we're not seeing enough up in here. Let's go ahead and do local mesh control. On say. Maybe all of these services is not a bad idea. The green dots give you a sort of idea of what's coming. If you can see those, they're quite. It's not bad. Let's try that. Two and it's half ish. Again, you suddenly see a local mesh control. We can adjust it if we wish. And regenerate the mesh. It's not bad. One last thing before we start here uh, under manage, make sure you've got remove rigid body modes. This should look for excessive deformations and should try and keep them under control. So if one of the calculations gets carried away, we seem to be ready. Uh, it's given as a warning saying it's not fully uh, degreed freedomed. So we have potentially fixed. It's probably not a bad start. Let's try that. So, as usual, or for the first time, moving left to right, solve. Make sure you're seeing zero clear credits. Status should match what we've already looked at. Solve. And we wait. See if we get the results. Let's close that. Uh, the default is to have this sort of like a design advisor show. Uh, shows you a kind of basic view of what you've got. 
button. You can see here that uh, safety factor down is nowhere no, nowhere below six here on the right side, which Orlov says is better. And we've got as low as two and a half ish on the inferior uh, rocker. It's a little closer look. If you don't want to see this automatically, just toggle this off. But it's not too bad. The first thing we have to check is to make sure the deformation is not too big. Displacement. Uh, I like to see actual first, uh, in case it's went crazy. This looks good. Quarter millimeter. It's not bad. About zero movement. Also not bad. Uh, from here, you might want to actually see the trend of the movements. Uh, that's why we have adjusted all the way up to adjusted five. So let's go to just 0.5. Just two times. See a small ripple here. Just five times. So this is buckling, but very insignificant compared to the movement of the inferior design. So we're getting what we'd expect. If you want to see your mesh, just turn it off. Uh, you can go to, for example, adjust it one time. Next might be stress. And we can see that the stress, even though it's got a bit of a buildup, this could be caused by our somewhat artificial locking of this lower corner. So we are gonna expect a stress riser because of that. But it's on the whole quite low and even. Uh, if we move this up, the, this one entirely, almost entirely disappears. So we can see our largest stress is actually in this compressed web, uh, but we're still not even, we've only removed the piece of the other one. So this is a much lower stressed part already. And we can see here, there's no sign of bending really. Right, we'd expect to see this behavior. So we have bending on the left, and very little to none on the right. This is good. So bending is bad. No bending is good. Everybody's happy. And there we go. That's how to go through all that sort of stuff. It's just an intro. Like there's a lot more down this road where we came from, uh, where we're going uh, with simulation. But for now, we can look at this as bending is in fact bad and we have proved it with our simulation pack inside of design, uh, sorry, Fusion 360. Thanks for watching. Over to you.